We are back now at the bottom of the hour following the breaking news on the medical condition of Queen Elizabeth. A statement from Buckingham Palace just moments ago, I'll quote here, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Uh, let's bring into the conversation U.S. Special Correspondent for BBC News, Caddy Kay. Caddy, we've been talking about how unusual and extraordinary a statement like that is mm -hmm. coming from the palace. Uh, we also have reports that um, the Prince Charles is at her side, the King in waiting, and that Prince William is on his way as others of the family are headed up to Scotland. Uh, what do you read into all of this mm -hmm. as somebody who has covered this Queen for so long? You're right, Willie. It is unusual for the palace to release personal statements um, about the Queen's health. They had told us earlier this year, before the Platinum Jubilee, that she had mobility issues um, and she has restricted the amount of appearances that he, she has done. But we did see her, didn't we, in that photograph just a couple of days ago with the new British Prime Minister Liz Truss at Balmoral. We know that she met Boris Johnson uh, and very shortly afterwards, yes, he tendered his resignation and very shortly afterwards we saw her in that photograph from that room in Balmoral. But it was unusual that a prime minister in Britain was uh, welcomed at Balmoral. Usually a new prime minister is sworn in, as it were, at Buckingham Palace. And the doctors had said that they didn't want the Queen. She'd been advised not to travel down to London for the new prime minister uh, because of her health. So there was some indication there, but I think when everybody saw the photograph, although she looked so frail, uh, we felt at least she was up, she was about, she was dressed, she was meeting the new prime minister. But it's unusual for the palace to put out this kind of statement and unusual as well for the whole family to be going up to Scotland um, from the south of England to see the Queen uh, uh, in this moment. So the Queen is 96. We covered her Platinum Jubilee and she was frail then mm. and everybody commented on you know, her extraordinary long reign. Um, but she's 96 years old and we know that she has had at least mobility issues uh, in the past year. And you're right that we do get from time to time get updates on the, Her Majesty's health. Uh, but the word concerned has been uh, injected by Buckingham Palace into that statement, which uh, uh, gives you some idea of the gravity of, of this moment. And Caddy, you mentioned the Platinum Jubilee just back in June, three months ago, celebrating 70 years mm -hmm. on, the, on the throne. And we were talking a little bit earlier in the hour just about the extraordinary longevity. And for some perspective, she's had 15 prime ministers during her reign. Her first was Winston Churchill, born in 1874. The current prime minister, who she just met a couple of days ago, as you said, Liz Truss, was born in 1975. So a span of, of 100 years. And for the mm -hmm. Queen herself, uh, going so far back to those visits with her parents, uh, we think after World War One, excuse me, after World War Two, there was one to Africa where as a 21-year-old, she made a speech and said, no matter how short or long my life is, I will spend it serving you, the people of the United Kingdom. You just cannot overstate the extraordinary span and impact of her life. Yeah, I don't think this is just for people of the United Kingdom either, Willie. I think for, for people around the world, it is impossible to imagine a figure with this longevity who has seen so much of what has happened on this planet in the last 70 years. She has come out of the post-Second World War period. She lived through that. She served uh, driving Land Rovers and mending car engines, um, learning the yeah. basics of mechanics during the Second World War. She lived all through the Cold War. Um, she has lived through all of the, you know, the social and cultural and political revolutions that we have seen in the, in the 60s. She has met all of the US presidents pretty much since the Second World War. Can you imagine Imagine another figure that has had that much longevity no. and that much uh, awareness and an impact on global events. She's the queen. She's not a political figure. She has not been involved in British politics or in global politics in that sense. But just by virtue of the amount she has lived through and the numbers of heads of states she has met around the world, she's had an impact. She just, by being the queen for so long, has had an impact. And she's, she, as we celebrated, I think, during the Platinum Jubilee, it was almost a, a big thank you from the British public to her years of service and the way that she has held the monarchy, um, you know, so immaculately, really, over the last 70 years. It's hard to mm. imagine somebody doing the job better than she has done it. 
as we sit here in September of 2022, think about the fact that Elizabeth received the phone call on February 6, 1952, that her father had died and that she would be the next Queen of England. Caddy, stay with us. We're going to talk to you again about this shortly. Again, the breaking news. Buckingham Palace putting out a statement that it is concerned now. The doctors for Queen Elizabeth concerned about Her Majesty's health, her family. Some of the family is already in Scotland at Balmoral Castle with her, others making their way. And we will be on top of that story.